Good morning. How's everybody this morning? Good morning. How's everybody on this side this morning? I'm going to have to move back in the study. You can see why. There's a devil here. Wants in daddy's lap every time she can. Figure there'll be a boy up here in the, on the other leg here in a minute. <laughs> oh, wait a minute, brethren. Everybody just kind of stops. I have to go in the other room and set this up because I'm out of battery over here. Hang on. Hang on. No. Dead gummit. No, no, no. Get. Hang on. What in the world is going on here? There we go. No. Oh. oh, goodness, brethren. Good morning. Good morning. Well, oh, we got power. Isn't that wonderful? <laughs> Isn't that wonderful? We have power. All right. Make sure everything's all right over here on the computer side. Thank God I can't read. Yeah, all right. That's what I wanted to see. All right, we're on verses 7 through 10 of Psalm 24, right? Ye gates, lift up your heads on high, ye doors that last for aye. Be lifted up, that so the king of glory enter may. But who of glory is this king? The mighty Lord is this, even that same Lord, that great in might and strong in battle is. Ye gates, lift up your heads, ye doors, doors that do last for aye. Be lifted up that so the king of glory enter may. But who is he that is the king of glory? Who is this? The Lord of hosts, and none but he, the king of glory is. So we'll sing this to coronation. Uh, coronation is, uh, all hail the power of Jesus' name. Probably the most common thing that's sung to it. 
coronation kind of fits, I think, this part. Ye gates, lift up your heads on high, ye doors that last for a be lifted up that so the king of glory So the King of Glory enter me. But who of glory is the King, the mighty Lord is this? Even that same in same Lord that great in might and strong in battle is. Ye gates lift up your heads, ye doors, doors that do last for a be lifted up, that so the King of glory enter may. Be lifted up, that so the King of glory enter may. But who is he that is this King of glory? Who is this? The Lord of hosts, and none but he, the King of glory is the and glory is. If anybody's over there, I'll be right back. I have to check on something here. Oh, goodness. All right. 
Anybody else around? No, nobody else around. Well, that's all right, by golly. I don't care. Mm. Everybody doing all right? I hope I am. I think I am. I do. I think I am. I think I'm doing all right. Let me adjust this just a hair. There we go. Well, do y'all see that Pastor Stevens? Some uh, Fairview Baptist. I don't know what kind of Baptist. The Fairview Baptist Church up there in Alberta got arrested again. Yes, he did. Helicopter spotted them having a clandestine meeting. So they'd already locked him out of the meeting house and all that. Tell you what, things ain't uh, looking too good, are they? After the flesh. However, after the spirit, things are going exactly as they're supposed to go. Our Lord God omnipotent reigneth it doesn't matter what men think they're doing they're doing nothing but what his hand and counsel determined before to be done oh I know my goodness what do you expect them to do police a pride parade like that's gonna happen Y'all see that one as well down in Florida? I want to say Fort Lauderdale. Truck plowed into a bunch of them gathered for a pride parade. Mayor gets on TV and says, oh, it's awful, such a hate crime. Come to find out it was the guy that was going to lead the parade. He was old couldn't walk so they were going to have him lead the parade in that pickup truck and it got away from him never let a good crisis go to waste democrats rule right now nah, he was so old that I think it just happened because he was old. Seventy-seven years old. Run into Fort Lauderdale Gay Men's Chorus, and he was a member of it. You mean Republicans? You're right. They're no better. That's what you can't get people to see. I saw in a comment on either that one, one of those two stories that I was reading this morning. Excuse me. And somebody said, G-O-P slash Christian. Uh, brethren, right, wrong, or indifferent, I am a registered Republican. I used to be a registered Democrat until the Democratic Party left me. And then I changed my registration to a Republican. And the only reason I did was so I could vote in the Republican primary. I'm more of a libertarian than anything.
All right, let's see if that hangs in there better for y'all on the YouTube side. Let me go back to what I was saying. A lot of y'all ain't going to like this. But I believe it to be the truth. If ever I said it. And I don't like to get into politics on these things, but I'll tell you what, with arresting pastors and persecution of Christians, particularly in Canada and particularly in Alberta, and why do you say particularly in Alberta? Because that's Western Canada, man. That's supposed to be like the West in the United States, you know, home of the home of the free give me a home where the buffalo roams all that kind of good stuff and instead i don't know what we got but anyway generation before mine y'all are the ones that's caused all this and i can see but you conservatives i'm not talking about the liberals talking about the conservatives who were conservatives in the 40s and 50s. Call yourself conservative. Now, didn't every one of y'all support Tail Gunner Joe? Let's weed out the communists. Let's get rid of the commies. Out of Washington. Out of Hollywood. Are you now, have you ever been a member of the Communist Party? Everyone that was asked that question should have said, none of your business. Until you make it illegal to be a member of the Communist Party, it's none of your business. Not one of those people who went on the blacklist in Hollywood or the music industry not one of those people had ever committed a subversive act against the government of the United States that could be called traitorous. Yet they were worthy of persecution because of the way that they thought. And because you didn't think that way, because you rightly were, were not a communist, didn't matter. That's good enough for them commies. Get them out of here. And you set the precedent for the persecution of anybody who didn't agree with the ruling party and the ruling ideology in politics. You set a bad precedent. You know what else was a bad precedent? Executive orders. Trying to make them have the force of law. Trump issued some good ones. Obama issued some rotten ones. Biden's issuing rotten ones. Bush did some good ones and some bad ones. Clinton did some good ones and some bad ones. Most of them did. Well, the bad may have outweighed the good, but they do not have the force of law. Law must be enacted by a legislature. But the legislature uh, doesn't want to deal with certain subjects, like war. So they let Kennedy and Eisenhower send troops to Vietnam without declaring war to fight communism. Though it was written before the Vietnam War was over, yes, Lincoln started that. Imprisoning the Maryland legislature so they wouldn't vote to secede. 
Because they sure would have. I believe. People think an awful lot more of Lincoln than they ought to. You know, Karl Marx sent him a telegram congratulating him for conducting the first successful red revolution in the world. Why do you think Republicans are red? Red's Communist Party. Red Republicans. Look up what red Republicans were. Yeah, they were Marxists. The Republicans started out being Marxist. Red Republicans. Look, that same generation that supported McCarthy, Tail Gunner Joe. Told me as a young, kind of hippified feller, don't put that American flag patch on your britches. Don't wear that shirt with the stars and stripes. Now, my goodness gracious, they're wearing hats with the stars and stripes on them. Jackets made out of an American flag. That same older generation started that. They're telling us it's disrespectful. I didn't, I, I didn't intend a political rant this morning. I promise I didn't. We were told that back in the 60s and 70s, that that was disrespectful to the flag to wear it as an article of clothing. Indeed, I believe if you would look up the rules, the old rules for handling a flag, it states it's not to be used as an article of clothing. Now, those are kind of arbitrary rules as made up by somebody, but, boy, oh, yeah, you can't wear shirts, you hippie, long-haired, pinko, commie. Hmm. Told us all. Now we put blue lines in the middle of the flag. To me, that's disrespectful. Black lines, whatever. And the flag's the flag. Leave it alone. You want something to say you support the police? Get you a band that says we support the police. You support this, that, or the other? Get you a sign that says that. Just come right out with it. You didn't know that about the Republican Party? Yes. The Red Republicans. And the Republicans are red today still. even though a lot of them aren't communist, Marxist. Marxist ideology prevailed in the early Republicans. That's why they wanted heavy-duty reconstruction. And Lincoln, though he bore other things in common with Marxists, he didn't want that. He realized America's America. Then you had some of those communists that were honorable people. It was a philosophical difference. 
but even though they didn't say it, they made it a thought crime. It was a thought crime to be a communist and be in a position of authority, a position of power, or a position of influence. Now, it's a thought crime to be a Christian and to try and be in a position of power, authority, or influence. You agree with that? Yes, you have to. And that's where it got its start. I'm glad you did too, by golly. I'm glad you did too, because that's what matters. So here we are. The social media has always been liberal, even when it was the paper. They only presented conservative viewpoints in the letters to the editor so that the liberals who supported things could get a laugh. I agree, Brother Wayne. Wayne says that he's a citizen of heaven. He hopes. I hope so, too. I hope I am. Question how involved in the politics of the world we should be. Absolutely. And my advice is very little, if any. You used to be a communist, did you? I got news for you. I was a good socialist myself. My college days. I read Marx and Lenin. Miles' little red book. i tell you what, Brother Bellamy. Uh, there's computer errors all over. It's not on your end it, it only, I guarantee you. Uh, YouTube's been uh, acting up. I guess they knew I was talking conservatism this morning. No, we ain't just going to talk about politics. Brother Wayne's brought up an interesting point, and I think it's a good one. How far should we be involved as citizens of heaven? Our conversation's in heaven. That means our citizenship is in heaven. But we're still on this earth. Our heavenly citizenship should mean more to us than anything about this earth. Now, I'm not going to go as far as the Amish and some other people and, and say, well, shouldn't even vote. I'm not going to go that far. I think it's all right to vote. you got to think about what you're voting for. Oh. 
Prophet Jeremiah. Looking here in the New King James, I, I, I kind of know what I want from the other, but I don't have one of them right handy. Well, when you try to move it, when I was trying to move everything around, well, guess what? Well, let's grab a translation more suited, maybe. This is ridiculous. Oh, come here, Mr. Strong. Uh, Jim Poole's old Strong's. One of them at least that he had. Oh, my, was I off.
This is uh, from the English Standard Version, Jeremiah 5, 30 and 31. An appalling and horrible thing has happened in the land. The prophets prophesy falsely. Now that's talking about Israel back in the Babylonish captivity days. Well, look at how many so-called prophets are out there today prophesying. How many of them's prophesying correctly and truly? No, no, the prophets prophesy falsely. There are so many false prophets out there. And the priests rule at their direction. Well, priests aren't supposed to be rulers, are they? King was a ruler. Priest was to uh, busy himself about the house of God, the temple. Got that right. Um, the temple they were to to uh, be about the service of the Lord in the temple. They weren't supposed to be ruling over the people. They would be above that. Theirs was a holy calling. The priest rule at their direction. My people, notice that, it's my people love to have it so. Well, what will you do when the end comes? Woe to them that call good evil and evil good. How much do we see that going on today? All of these things are pointing the disillusion, as it were, of, of society are pointing toward one thing. At the Lord's time with this old earth, and the nations of it, of which we are one. Oh, we're in one. We're not of one, I hope. It's about to be wrapped up. I have no idea when that will be. That could be a hundred years from now. It could be a hundred days from now. could be a thousand years from now, as we reckon it. Doesn't matter. My word to you, brethren, is stand firm, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ has made us free, and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. And I'm going to tell you, brethren, that in most cases, getting tied up with the state I don't care what state it is. I don't care whether it's the United States of America. I don't know whether, care whether it's the United Kingdom. I don't care whether it's the government of the Philippines or what. Paul was meaning that specifically to the Galatians. Stand fast in the liberty wherewith Christ has made you free, and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage, as talking about the Jewish law, which was trying to be enforced by these Judaizers who came down from James and followed him around wherever he went, who I believe now, I believe, brethren, even more strongly than I have, that was the thorn in the flesh that Paul besought the Lord three times to remove. He said, my grace is sufficient for thee. I'll bear you through this. Don't you, don't you think I won't? But I'm going to tell you what. Anytime we put anything between 
us and Christ, between Christ's word to us and ourselves, we done lost that liberty. We have. We've lost that liberty. So stand fast. State wants to persecute you. If you're persecuted for righteousness sake, happy are ye. If any man suffer as a Christian, don't suffer as a thief or a busybody. If any man suffer as a Christian, let him rejoice. right a corrupt tree cannot bring forth good fruit period and you're not going to find aid and comfort in the state it's in Christ and in him alone well I'm going to get off that soapbox for a minute Random thoughts, right? Now I want to make, I want to bring up a couple of things before time to hush. No, I gotta say one more thing for a day. <laughs> Keep in mind what the Jews told Pilate. If you let this man go, you're no friend to Caesar. And that's going to be said to us someday. If you follow this man, you're no friend to the state. We have to say you're right. Where is your allegiance? I hope it's to him who loved you and washed you in his own blood from your sins. Or if your translation says he loosed you from his sins by his, from your sins by his blood, that's cool too. All right, I finished up uh, the biography of Pink by Ian Murray. As long as you realize Murray's a Presbyterian Calvinist, actually a, probably a Calvinian, free offer man, all that. He documents very plainly that when um, well I'm going to put it this way he documents very plainly a change in the views of Pink from the time he wrote Sovereignty of God to probably about 10 years after that till his death in my opinion he got more liberal theologically and believing in a free offer of the gospel denouncing what he called hyper-Calvinism and all of these things based on a legal reading of the New Testament. And what he mentioned in passing earlier, I think applies, and that's that Pink got into Andrew Fuller and accepted Fuller as sound theology. How many of you have read Rushton? Thoughts on particular redemption. Brother Barry printed it years ago. It was reprinted in all the old Baptist papers back in the day. That's a scathing indictment of Fuller. This John Stevens work that I've got here somewhere, it's a scathing indictment too, but it's a lot harder to read. I mean, he's, his writing style is, is a little weird. By what standard? There you go. Um, Pink was influenced by him and by Spurgeon, who was influenced by Fuller. I believe that the Primitive Baptist Library has copies of Rushton available. 
I'd like to uh, recommend that book highly. And he said how awful it was that Phil Pot followed Gadsby who followed Huntington. In this hyper-Calvinistic antinomianism. I got news for Mr. Pink. Gadsby didn't follow Huntington. They were both taught by the same source. And I believe that was the Spirit of God. Yes. I stand here before you. No, I don't. I sit here before you. A hyper-Calvinistic antinomian. I hope. And same with Phil Pot. Phil Pot didn't. Uh, I, I just used Gadsby and, and Huntington because they were contemporaneous. At least part of Gadsby's ministry and, and Huntington's overlap. Huntington was dead before Philpott came along. Nothing wrong with Philpott. Oh, my goodness gracious. Anybody wants to... Uh, the only thing I disagree with Philpott on is his eternal sonship. I do not believe the Godhead of Christ was begotten. all the Catholic theologians and Episcopalians notwithstanding. Tell you what, I'd rather have J.C. Philpott than three quarters of the other Baptists in England at the same time. He was. Probably seven-eighths. I got a little upset reading it. Got a little upset reading it. I did. Read Murray. Praise in pink for his change in views. Responsibility. Keeping the balance. Responsibility. Let me ask you a question. Do you have the ability to respond? Free moral agency. An agent can't be free. He's got to act for the person for whom he is an agent or the entity for which he is an agent. It's not free. Moral, a word that's not found in the authorized version of the Bible. What does it mean? What some theologian decided it meant. Probably based on what some philosopher thought it meant. Oh, yes, we're free moral agents. No, you're not. None of the above apply to you. You're not free. You're bound to do evil continually. You're not moral. There's no morality about you. Not unless grace has, has uh, done something for you. Oh, you can say you are, but that doesn't mean you are in the sight of God. And then you're not an agent. You can't act for somebody else. My goodness gracious. Free offer. Duty faith. And he quotes uh, everybody from Calvin on down. You know, you just want to smack them sometimes. And say, can you not see? And the answer is no, they can't. Because their natural native Arminianism has blinded them to the fact that they like that they don't realize what Christ the truth of what Christ told his disciples. Without me, you can do nothing. Vessels, yeah. Vessels. And you know old Murray implies that that vessel of wrath fitted to destruction fitted itself. 
and I'm going to say what I said once before on here. I want y'all to show me a vessel fitting itself for anything. If I understand the word vessel correctly, it's a container, it's a pot, it's a crock. And this old vessel sitting up there on the shelf says, "Man, what are you doing? You can't, you can't, you can't pour wine in me. I'm made for oil. I've made myself ready for the oil." And this other vessel says, "Wait a minute, over here. No, no, no. You can't pour oil in me. I'm here for water. I've made myself ready for water." How ignorant. I started to say something stronger, but the Lord held me back. Uh, for which I'm grateful, Lord. Thank you. I'll tell you, brother. I get exasperated. Well, I guess that's a good thing. So would I recommend Ian Murray's Life of Pink? Yes, with reservation. You need to realize what Murray is and what he's setting out to prove about Arthur Pink. How successfully he does it is up to you. I think he was probably 90% successful in stating that Pink went from being uh, 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 a sovereign grace believer to being a free offer man. Well, I believe in free grace, a free offer, and I believe in sovereign grace. No, you don't. Not if you believe in a free offer. You can't. You can't believe it. Don't, don't even try. If the gospel's an offer that can be accepted or rejected, Oh, it's not in the power of man to accept or reject it, then why offer it to him? Also, he'll be without excuse. Oh, yeah, right. Give me a break. Nowhere in the New Testament will you find Christ being offered to anyone. Ethiopian eunuch reading Isaiah. Philip listening to him. Join yourself to that chariot, the Spirit said. Philip says, no, I don't think I will. I'm a free moral agent. I don't want to talk to him. Can you imagine Philip saying that to the Spirit? No, I'm a free moral agent. I'm not going to do that. He went and joined himself to that chariot said, do you understand what you're reading? Guy says, how can I? Is this man talking about himself or is this prophet speaking about someone else? And Philip opened his mouth and began at the same scripture and preached it to him, Jesus. He didn't offer Jesus to him. He didn't ask him to make a decision. He didn't give him an invitation. Indeed, the eunuch looked at him and says, well, here's water. What does hinder me to be baptized? He said, well, if you believe with all your heart, you may. I believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God. Philip said, good enough for me. Come on. We like to hear a little more experience than that today. But I'm not sure it's as necessitous as some of us would like it to be. Well, that's two things I had on my mind. That's right. Free offer makes the gospel message of condemnation to those who reject it. That's hardly good news. Amen.
right. Is there anything else, brethren, which we need to? In, any other comments? Any other questions? Yo, excuse me just a minute. Go ahead and type. Go ahead and talk amongst yourselves. I'll be Lord willing right back. Well, brethren, let's pray. If there's anything else, you can mark it down now. Lord, we thank thee that thou art the sovereign ruler of the skies, that thou art the one that's ever gracious and ever wise. We pray that thou would keep us, that thou would hold us in thy hand, that thou would give us a fresh taste of thy love, we might see thine anointing upon us. We might feel thy presence with us. And to know that if we must walk in darkness, let us know that we cannot kindle a fire to light our way. That the sparks of our own flame will do nothing. But let us walk in the light of thy word he who is the light of the world. Let us see light in his light and walk according. Go with us. Bring us back. Keep us. May we be blessed to give thee the praise, the honor, and the glory for it all. In the name of Jesus, amen. Amen. Well, brethren, I hope the Lord will bless you. And if the Lord does well, we'll see you tomorrow. Adios.